What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Nash here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of WWE's Biggest Issue. This episode is going to be a little, it's going to be very similar to Friday's episode of Yu Gi Oh!'s Biggest Issue. This time, I'm going to be talking about the top five worst WWE matches of all time and how exactly can WWE fit, you know, how exactly can WWE basically uh, avoid it? How, how how they can avoid it in 2021. So there's actually a website here that I'm 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 actually basing this off of. Um, the name the the name of the website it's called is called the name of the source is called the Sportster. Big shout outs to them. This is basically how uh, I can't believe I'm, I'm I'm about to say his name. How basically Dave Meltzer criticized these matches. So I'm picking only five 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 of these, and I'm actually gonna start start with this one. Which was in, I don't even know. Um, it, which I, actually, I'm, I'm actually gonna start start with this one. This was from Survivor Series, I believe. I want to say '95, maybe. I I, I want to say '95, like right around there. I would say. Um, so if you guys know, if so, if you guys don't know who Doink who Doink the Clown is, he was, he. His character was kind of an oddball. It, it it was kind of weird to say the very least. Least it's like one minute he's he he's a baby face, the next minute he's a heel. <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. And um, he was kind of all over the place. And at Survivor Series, and you guys can watch it on the WWE Network. The Royal Family versus Clowns are us. This was from a Survivor Series map from a Survivor Series in the nineties, and. I'm actually gonna read what the article said. What 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 this part says? It says at it says as at Survivor Series and at as Survivor Series, an eight man elimination match took place with six of the eight participants being little people. It was quite clear that this would not be an intense matchup, but one specifically created to humor humor and entertain the crowd. Being a filler match, the audience did not expect much from this one, but even then, this one fell below expectations. The royal family consisted of of Jared the King Lawler and three mini Lawlers, while the Clowns R Us consisted of Doink the Clown and three mini Doinks. Um, I believe I believe it was uh, Doink, Dink, Donk, and someone else. You you guys can comment below because I think that was how how it went. While some of the jokes in this match worked, the rest fell flat. This match is simply one of the worst, one of the most annoying and insulting events in, in the history of professional wrestling. Yeah, honestly, um, it's it's kind of in, it's kind of in, interesting because when it comes to to Survivor Series, you know that the matches ha that the Survivor Series elimination matches have to be good. Like like when you think about like when you talk about good Survivor Series matches, you, you think of Raw versus SmackDown in two thousand five. Which I think SmackDown had had Ray Ray Mysterio, JBL, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, and the World Champion Batista. Raw had the world the world had the Raw Tag Team Champions, uh, Kane and Big Show, Chris Masters, Carlito, and Shawn Michaels. I believe Michaels was the captain of Raw. I think Batista was the captain of SmackDown, given the fact that he was the World Champion. It came down to. Orton and Michaels, I believe, and Randy Orton picked up the picked up a victory, which was a huge one for him because he was only what two, three, four, five. He was like three, maybe four years into his career in WWE, so he was still he he was still rel relatively uh, fresh in WWE. Um, so that yeah, that was one that was a big match. Um, I've, I I actually saw I actually saw uh, clips of this on. On, on I think on YouTube, and I'm gonna be honest. It, I'm I'm gonna be honest. It sucked. It sucked 100. percent Truth be told, out, out of ten, out of ten, uh, Dave Meltzer actually gave this match 2.5 out of 10, which was an interesting one. The way so in so in this sense, when it comes to Survivor Series, the best way that they can avoid th things like this in 2021 at this year's Survivor Series in November, the bit the best way. Put ma make matches that make sense, like they d like like they did with last year's Survivor Series in 2020. Because if you, if you guys remember, the matches were actually fairly good. They were like really good. 
the women's match, the women's elimination match had had Jax, Baszler, Evans, Royce, and Lana. Uh, SmackDown had had Bianca Belair, the Riot Squad, Bailey, and Natalia. Truth be told, Lana ended up being the last woman standing. For the men's side, it was a clean sweep for for Raw, but it had AJ Styles, Keith Lee, Sheamus, Braun Strowman, and Riddle. SmackDown had Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, uh, Corbin, Seth Rollins, who sacrificed himself, and Otis. And uh, then, of course, too, you, you you had Sami Zayn versus Bobby Lashley, New Day versus the Street Profits, Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns, and then, of course, too, uh, Oscar versus Sasha Banks, and then the cross-branded Battle Royal, which saw Miz eliminate Dominic Mysterio to win... Um, to win that match, another really pro an another good example of a good Survivor Series match would probably have to be 2011 Rock the the Rock and John Cena against the Awesome Truth Miz and Our Truth never 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 before never again and yeah that was a really good one so the best way for them to avoid some so, something like this make the Survivor Series matches good they they they've actually done that. Over, within the last couple of years, if they were to continue to, if they were to, con, if they were to continue that streak, there's no doubt that that survivors that that though that those types of matches will get a bigger pop than they did with this one. So the second one that I do that I want to talk about is one that a lot of people didn't that a lot of people had completely forgot about. Excuse me. And I believe this was on a episode of Monday Night Raw. You guys can comment below if you guys know it. But the Big Boss Man versus Al Snow. And I believe this was on Raw. The match was known, was dubbed Kennel from Hell. The article, the, the, it captions, while the Attitude Era produced some of the greatest matches in WWE's history, it also produced some of the worst ones as well. The Big Boss Man vs. El Snow was one of those, was one of those, the latter. Characterized by terrible gimmicks and offensive background setup, the poor wrestling skills, and poor wrestling skills, it's clear to see why Dave Meltzer gave this match a rating of minus three, of minus three, actually. Dubbed Kennel from Hell, this match was held in a double cage where the winner had to escape both cages to win. Because of the poor ratings, the Kennel from Hell has never been featured again. So, if you guys don't know what, if, if you guys don't know Kennel from Hell, it's basically a steel cage inside Hell in a Cell. So, if you guys remember the old blue steel cage that WWE had used for so for so many years, if you guys if you guys remember that cage. And if you guys remember the original Hell in a Cell, that was like, I would say about the height, I, I, I would say about the height of my room, basically. About the height of my room. Um, if you guys remember that, if you guys remember those two, it was basically those two in one. And the rules were, were simple. It's Again, it, it was simple. It's basically just escape. Escape both cages to win. And... Yeah, that was one of those matches that sucked. I think Bossman won that one, if I remember right. I don't remember, but again, they stopped. They did not air. Uh, obviously, they said it, it. I mean, the article said it itself. A, a match like this has never been seen again. This was a one-time deal, and it sucked so bad. So again, so I, I, I really don't think think there's a way for them to avoid it other than just not talk about it basically unless it's somebody were uh, unless it's somebody were like oh let's do oh we'll do a kennel from hell why why would you want to be why why would you want to do kennel from hell when if i remember correctly there were also dogs uh involved in the match as well so you so you have to escape the cage before you got your ass chewed out by dogs so this was one of those matches that a lot of people um you know a lot of the fans thought oh this is a good good idea but once they got a look at it, they're like, "No, this sucked. This was not a good idea." Um, so, honestly, I it doesn't surprise me, but it is it is what it is. Um, this is one that I actually saw myself on TV. 
So, if you guys remember uh, SmackDown from, I, from like 2006, 2007, you will know that uh, there's a character in WWE that uh, a lot of people liked. Um... Because of the because because of the fanfare that he had with the fans, that being the Boogeyman. Yes, there was a there, there, there was a tag team match that was so hilarious. I was watching that. I'm like, yep, yep. That's about the worst of it. It was a match between the Boogeyman and Little Boogeyman versus Finley and Hornswoggle, who they dubbed as. Little bastard. After spending a few months in WWE's developmental development squad, the Boogeyman would secure his first contract with the company at, at WWE. The Boogeyman spent most of his time scaring other contestants and from time to time placing worms inside the mouths of his opponents. Yes, I, I remember those days. As a wrestler, Boogeyman was quite competitive and holds wins against big names like Booker T and The Miz. Considering the type of matches he has been in before, this matchup placed him in slightly in slightly different terrain. For a better part of the match, Finley took on took on a little little boogeyman. On the other hand, Boogeyman's offense was quite terrible. Yeah. Um, apparently Dave Meltzer gave it a minus three. Honestly, honestly, the best way for for WWE to avoid some another scenario like this, don't don't bring these matches up. Um because if I remember correctly, I think Boogeyman, I think the, I, I think Boogeyman and Little Boogeyman, I think both won that one if I remember right. Um, so I'm gonna be honest, I was actually a big fan of Finley even, even from back then, given, given his his skills in in the ring, his prowess, you know, given how tough he was in the ring, he was one of those guys that a lot of people liked. You know that respected but did not like he. You know he. You know you basically loved to hate Finley, and there were there were a lot of superstars who who were who were in that same path, and obviously Randy Orton was one of them. One of them. The Miz is one of them. Even still to this day, uh, Roman Reigns is another one. But this match was absolutely trash. I was just sitting there and I'm like. Literally just, literally just sitting there like this. And, yeah, that was a very bad match. It, it, it was a bad match. Best way for them to avoid it is to not do things like this again. Because if they were to do something like this again, the ratings would go down extensively. Like, I know that the ratings for Raw have gone down so low. There's been rumors going around saying that they could potentially... That that Monday Night Raw could lose their could lose their deal with with the with with USA Network and they've been together for 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 I would say about what I would say to a little over a couple of like they've been around for a while they've been together for a while so yeah that no that sucked. Another one that I want to bring up, and I actually saw, so that was, that, that was a number, let's see, one, two, three. So we are down to the last two that I want to talk about. And the one that I do want to bring up as well is actually one from, from WrestleMania 5. So if you guys knew, so if, if you guys don't know anything about WrestleMania 5, um... So Hulk Hogan had been had been WWE champion for for well over four years, and WrestleMania three. Um. And WrestleMania three got to see a um. Got got to see Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. And that was a match everybody wanted to see. They were like, "Oh, what if this happens?" And it and it actually happened. I think Hogan won won, won that match. But WrestleMania. But several months later, a number of months later, Andre the Giant had beat Hogan um, on an episode. I think what was it called? Called the the main event. I I, I think it was what I think it was or something like that. Um, 
thanks to the fact that the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, actually paid a fake referee to count the shoulders of Hulk Hogan, and Hogan's shoulder was up. So the referee could have saw that, and it would have been a two count. But it ended up being a three. Andre ended up winning the title, but handed it to the Million Dollar Man, Ted, Ted DiBiase. And so... And so I believe the president back in the day, there was a guy named Jack, named uh, Jack Tunney, I think I, I think was his name. Um, he was the president of the WWE back in the day, and WrestleMania Four hosted a tournament, a one night only tournament, where whoever won the whole tournament by the end by the end of the night would become WWE champion, and it ended up being. Being Macho Man Randy Savage. One year, and he held the title for literally an entire year until Hogan won the title from Savage. And let's keep that also in mind WrestleMania 5 was a really interesting night because, um, because we got to see the heel turn of, I believe, of Rick Martel. We got to see Bad News Brown as well, you know, as well. And this match that and now Dave Meltzer gave a three, gave a negative three. Andre the Giant and Jake the Snake Roberts. While while on while Andre the Giant was a renowned figure, his wrestling style was somewhat un, unorthodox and aesthetic, aesthetically unpleasant. Apart from being quite slow, Andre the Giant also spent a bigger portion of the match leaning on the ropes. It as is evident. In most of his matches, thus anyone who faced Andre the Giant was bound to have a terrible match. When Jake Roberts and Andre the Giant met at WrestleMania 5, fans got to witness one of the worst performances ever presented by two legendary professional wrestlers. Yeah, so if I remember right, I think uh, I think Jake the Snake won that one. You guys can comment below if you guys, if you guys know, but I, I remember watching this on DVD because I still, because I still have the WrestleMania anthology on, on DVD, which I think most of the discs got scratched, but... That's just from using from what from watching those matches from the from watching those discs a lot, and Big John Stud was the special guest referee, and I believe he counted Andre's shoulders one two three. Thus, Roberts won. If I remember correctly, that that whole night, I think more than eighty percent of the matches actually sucked. The other 20% actually were really good, uh, given the fact that we saw Andre, um, not Andre, but given the fact that, that we saw Hogan defeat, um, um, defeat, uh, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage for the WWE Championship, and I think... Honestly, this is going to be this will this match will actually go down in history as one of the worst matches ever. But if you but it's something that WWE has always tried has has always tried to avoid for decades now. You know, avoid having you know a giant you know go up against you know you know someone that's half his size. You know, and make you know you know avoid that match. You know, a match like that being the worst ever. Like you know, when, when when you think about matches that are a form of David versus Goliath, you think of like Triple H versus versus Great Khali, or or you think about um, you think about Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez. Even though Undertaker is like six ten, six eleven, almost seven feet tall, you think about Rey Rey Mysterio versus you know Undertaker or Great Khali. Those types of matches. Are basically a form of David versus Goliath, and this was no different. And no, there the fanfare was not even good. Like I'm, like I'm literally, I'm literally looking at the photo right now of the the photo of excuse me of Andre the Giant being hung over, hung by the ropes, literally tied 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 to the ropes. And there are there's actually quite a few. There's a lot of fans that are just sitting there like. What's going on here? So yeah, but with that being said, there is a there is one honorable mention one honorable mention that I do want to bring up, and this one actually got a pretty high a pretty 
I, I guess a pretty uh, low rating, but um, it was on an episode of I guess I, th I think of Monday Night Raw, so to speak. I think was it Raw? Yeah, I think it was Monday Night Raw. It was the match between Goldust and the Ultimate Warrior. After taking a break from 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 the WWE, the WWE, the Ultimate Warrior finally returned to professional wrestling in '96. His first match was at WrestleMania three was at WrestleMania thirteen against Triple H. Upon his return to the WWE, everything that the Ultimate Warrior tried doing never felt quite right. While his match against Triple H was one of his worst performances, it is the tie against Goldust that would be the final straw to his illustrious career, and WWE would release the Ultimate Warrior from his contract four months after his return. The match against Goldust was not only filled with offensive chants from, from the WWE Universe, but strange performances and gimmicks that did... That did either star little favors. Yeah, I remember hearing hear, hearing the stories of how this was his last run in WWE before he retired. But funny enough, but but funny enough, the Ultimate Warrior actually continued wrestling on the on the on the independent scene for several years now for for several years before finally retiring retiring. I think in twenty ten. I think he retired. In full in 2010, before he got inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2014, uh, he said he 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 cut a promo the next night on Raw, and then later and then not too long after that he did pass away. Which honestly it it is sad, but um, the thing but the thing is is that with 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 the 90s, you know you know with with WWE in in the 90s there were a lot of matches that absolutely sucked, and that was one that that was one of them. Um, you know, obviously, obviously, no disrespect to the to the Ultimate Warrior, but I I I think I understand why he why he 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 left. He was re he was released from from his contract. It was because of reason. It, it, it was because of matches like that. M you know, matches like that. Matches like against Triple H. It didn't settle se settle well with him. So. But with that being said, there is one match that I do want to bring up, and it's something that I that I talked about in last week's episode of WWE's Biggest Issue, and it is the match between John Cena and The Rock. Do not get me wrong; the match that the their first encounter at WrestleMania 28 in Miami was incredible, incredible. It got such a big pop from the fans. But at WrestleMania 29, one year later, in uh, in 20. 13 it didn't settle well it, it did not settle well with John Cena or the rock because the the match play the play of the match if you will was X was was the exact same there was no change in how the match started but the way the match ended was the change itself because John Cena ended up winning that match so and I'm actually going to be talking about this, um, and I'm actually, I'm, and I'm, I'm actually, I might talk about, and I'm actually going to be talking about this in a future, in a future episode of WWE's, WWE's Biggest Issue, where I'll talk about, about, re, re, first time matches and rematches that have the same end result. That'll be a future episode. If you, if you guys want to see that, you guys can comment below, but, that match it didn't settle well with the fans, and WrestleMania 29 was the worst one of all because of the fact that most of the matches on the card absolutely sucked. The only two matches that were good were was the match between Brock Brock Lesnar and Triple H, and of course the match between the Undertaker and CM Punk. That was those two matches right there was the reason why WWE fans. Paid to go to WrestleMania that night was because of that moment, because of those matches right there. They didn't care about any any of the other matches on the card. Those are the only two matches that they cared about. So if there was a way for WWE to uh, to avoid avoid something like something like that, like we saw WrestleMania 29, have I, I would say spice up, you know, spice up the match a little bit. You know, give them a stipulation. And let them go at it. That's how I see it anyway. But guys, that will do it for this video. Question of the day. What is your all-time worst WWE? Was the all-time, in your opinion, 
the all-time worst WWE match ever? Let me know in the comments below. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button if you guys are new to the channel and you guys want more episodes of WWE's Biggest Issue, which does which which does gets which gets posted every single Monday. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any new content that comes your way. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All the links will be down in, in the description. And if you guys have any fan mail that you want to send me and want me to open up on the channel, 2021, I will be doing fan mail. My address will be in the, in the description. And on that, this is your boy Nash, signing out.